Happy Sunday, fam. Um, full confession, it is Sunday. I'm filming this video today. My week was absurd. It was wild. Um, it, everything was a blessing, but even 20 blessings in a row can still be super stressful. So um, it was an incredible work week. I had zero free time. I'm overworked and under rested. Um, as you may be able to tell from my eyes, I'm struggling. So um, I wanted to actually do, um, someone left a comment, and I had been thinking about this video, but someone left a comment um, saying, um, you know, differences between New York and LA or something like that. And I wanted to share that video. So for those of you who may have clicked on this video um, and you don't know me and you're just curious, hi, I'm Kelly, welcome to the video. Um, for my fam fam, what up booze? Uh, so I gonna just jump right in and I also have no time to edit this. So this is gonna be a stream of consciousness. We're just gonna talk and keep it super real, uncut, no bells and whistles, no fancy fancy, because I'm doing a shoot today, which I'm really excited about. And if you follow me on Instagram, you may see what's up. Okay, jumping in. Just a tiny bit of back history. I have lived in New York, so I'm originally from Philly and I left home at um, 17 to go to college. But since school, I basically um, lived in New York. So I moved to New York right away. Um, I had a very, very, very um, blessed situation. I don't know. I think, you know, I think all of my steps are extremely led by God. And I think that the choices that I've made in my life to get me to where I am um, has really just been about me being able to hear and listen and follow my purpose. So I moved to New York, um, sort of on a whim, but I didn't move in the way that, um, you might think, you know, you just grab your stuff, you got $50 in your pocket and you go because something in me, even that young knew that New York would eat me alive if I didn't have a plan. So if you would like to see a video about the best ways to move to New York from your smaller city or small town, I am happy to help um, because I moved to New York and I think one time since leaving my parents house I had to like ask for help and it was because I was really really thoughtful about my decisions my planning how I manage my money you know putting myself in position so we can do a separate video about that um, but I moved to New York and so essentially I'm in my, you know I have almost half and half lived um, well, wow, brain fart. I'm leaving that in there because it's early and I have not had coffee. I have essentially lived half my life in Philly and half my life in New York. You know, left to 17, it's like literally half and half. So, um, for me, New York is the epicenter of like at least the United States. I don't want to say the world because that's presumptuous. Um, but New York is amazing and it gave me everything I could have ever, like New York owes me nothing. It is where I formed my, you know, longest life, my lifelong, lifelong, <laughs> my lifelong relationships, um, friendships. I earned my stripes. I mean, you know, all the New York things, like we all joke, like you're a New Yorker if you make it 10 years, I did that. You're a New Yorker if you've like cried on the subway because of work, I've done that. Or like because of a breakup, I've done that. Like you have to really want to be there. So the differences from New York to LA are so incredibly vast. So I'm, I'm just starting with New York. New York is, um, it's a hard city to live in. And I think because I was so young, I think the younger you are, you just have less like creature comforts that you care about. Um, things like large apartments or um, not caring if your bathroom is right next to the kitchen or just, you know, certain things that New Yorkers concede. Um, always being surrounded by people. It's an endless city and there is no rest for the weary, you know, and if you're weary, you probably would move because you don't belong there um it's 24 7 go 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 um people always talk about like the energy in new york and it sounds like some esoteric bs but it's completely real the second i get off the plane at jfk there is i i am fully immersed in what new york is and that is the good and the bad um so i'll start with the good things the good thing about new york is you can get anything you want anytime, all the time, always. Like, so if you are um, wanting to go roller skating at four o'clock in the morning, or you want Cheerios to be delivered to your house at four o'clock in the morning, like New York, 
is where it is. Um, there's endless opportunities in terms of work, like because there's so many um, industries that, you know, have their like headquarters or at least a main office in New York. So if you work in anything from finance to creative fields to um, healthcare to um, tourism, whatever it is, you probably can find a job in New York. Now, it's also super, super, super competitive because, um, you know, the best of the best are in the city. So the top of their class and the, you know, the smartest, the brightest, the most beautiful, like that's what New York is, right? So um, it is competitive, but, you know, the possibilities are endless and I love it. But in terms of living, um, and rents are insanely expensive, which we all know, but what you get for that money is also very disturbing. Like <laughs> I have been so, so the apartment gods have shown down on me so many times. Um, so when I first moved that first year from Philly, I actually moved to New Jersey because we found a loft that was insane. It was huge and I didn't even have furniture. We had like this tiny little like um, round, um, bistro set from like Pier 1 and a, a vintage sofa. I had a bed. My roommate had a bed and like we used to like roller skate around the apartment because we were kids and like have parties until our landlord was like, if you have another party here, we're going to throw you out. So, um, and then I moved to, um, I wanted to live alone, I think. So I moved to, no, no, we moved together and we moved to Harlem and it was kind of before Harlem was like truly gentrified and coming from like a suburby kind of area in Philly it was a little intense craziest thing ever is that Mike Tyson had a pigeon coop that was on an abandoned building next to our building and so to get upstairs to build the coop and to manage it and cross over to that building him and his like worker bees or whatever would come up our stairs and go and like build this this um pigeon coop and um like we had a skylight so sometimes we would look up and dudes would just be like looking in our living room it was so bizarre we would come downstairs and Mike Tyson would just be standing outside the building it was it was I used to tell people that story and it would be like Kelly no this is not real I'd be like Mike Tyson is outside my door and it was so weird um so that was our first apartment and it was kind of a railroad style. So it was like one bedroom at one end, one bedroom at another end, and it was long and narrow. And in the middle were like the bathroom, the kitchen, and then a small living room. Then I went to live on my own and I moved to another apartment um, in Harlem. And that is when I um, started working at my PR agency. So I started out working in finance um, on Wall Street, which was strange. It was, I was working in tech we'll get into my career path because I think it's an interesting story and the people that I've told it to are like you should write a book and perhaps I will one day but um so the second apartment was a two-bedroom um on my own because I thought I wanted to either um have an office or I don't know what I thought and um I was still working sort of indie but then I needed to get like into an agency so I did that and I will never forget my mom told me she fasted for me for that job she was just like I prayed for you I fasted for days like oh my mom was such a ooh gem so um that was my second apartment in New York and then I moved again moving a lot in New York is also really common um because you either find something better or your rent just like skyrockets for no reason or whatever um so then I moved to another apartment um I think I missed one Oh, I did miss one. I think I moved from Harlem to the Upper East Side. Yeah, I think I went over to the Upper East Side and I lived in this really tiny one bedroom. Well, it was technically a two bedroom, but there wasn't a living room, so it was strange. But my neighbors were loud and it was cool because I could walk to work and um, I just knew that I wanted like more space and that building ended up getting mice which is also super common in New York and I was like gotta go like I'm from Philly like I can't do mice like I can do I can do you know a crappy heating system or I can do a lot of things but I cannot do like creatures that I did not invite you know what I'm saying not a puppy or a kitten um I you know I'm allergic to both but like I'd sooner live with one of them so um my next apartment was in Harlem and then I got another apartment in Harlem and I think that was the one that I was in the longest that was the one I was in for like years and because it was just like a huge apartment a great deal rent stabilized and um you know I kind of made that my home um so the biggest 
thing about all of that is like kind of just transitioning trying to find your space and you know um figuring out what exactly where you want to be what neighborhood and all that um so that's the housing situation and i've heard absolute horror stories like yeah there is the people who a friend of mine she moved um from philly i think or north carolina originally and she had her cousin's apartment in the east village and it was like a thousand bucks it was rent stabilized from like the 70s or something and um never the price never really went high and it was this amazing space but she you know after a few years had to give it up um so there's like those those like how did it happen oh my goodness stories and then i know people who pay three thousand dollars to share one room and they have like a shared bathroom so the rent disparity thing i don't know it's the rent thing is really extreme in new york and it is intense um so I think I'm I don't know I don't I don't want to get too rambly I'm trying to like make sure I'm like giving you kind of a little bit of my story but also just like what it's like to live in New York um so you know if you're career focused and you're young and you're hungry and you got that hustle New York is absolutely the place to be um if you are a person who um needs like peace and quiet and um, can't sleep through potential like sirens all the time or even in the best neighborhood there is noise it's not really about because in Manhattan especially there is no such thing as like a bad neighborhood I mean there might be one or two sprinkled little pockets left like all the way uptown but in terms of like the the, the whole of Manhattan almost every neighborhood is super gentrified um which you know that could be a good or a bad thing um and you know even all the way into brooklyn queens there was like you know no matter where you live in the city like in manhattan it's loud and i lived all the way uptown and that was on purpose because it did help remove me a little bit and my one street was a very very quiet even though it was an avenue it was a, it was a quiet avenue um but you still get either neighbor noise or street noise you know some people running around at three o'clock in the morning um drunk and just having fun and decide to kind of hang out right in front of your building like all of that stuff um another great thing about new york is that it's extremely walkable like you don't need public transportation i mean you don't need um a car because there's public transportation and you uh, most new yorkers almost walk everywhere unless it's like super far i feel like if it's more than like two subway stops then you generally will take the subway but if it's just one or two subway stops you generally walk so that's like 20 blocks or so and so you get a lot of steps in which is great um and there's always some amazing festival or concert or outdoor park thing um of course all the best broadway shows and um all the best performances and concert and, and all that stuff comes into the into new york so that is a, a huge plus um so and i can't really imagine living somewhere where you don't get any shows you don't get any like live performances there's no like culture or art um la is different to that but at least stuff does come here um so you know those are kind of um just like top line things and now let me just describe my la experience to you a little bit so i've been coming to la forever like i've been coming here for work since the beginning of my career um i usually have only been here for um two or three days at a time i think one time i was here for a week and at first i hated la i was like yo la is not for me um it is so chill here and that new york hustle that energy that edge it just is not here and so i was i didn't know how to relate i was like y'all are just so like get busy you know i just was like yo do something let's get some work done like you know let's why is everyone just so relaxed and it almost put me on edge and i feel like a lot of new yorkers kind of have that same experience when they get here like so y'all just gonna sit and have coffee like what's happening here um so you know i i didn't really relate at first but i always enjoyed like the weather and just the no humidity thing because you know new york summers are like an actual swamp um and you know la is a pretty city you know so in certain spots 
So I think, you know, that glamorous, and especially when you're here for work, everything's paid for, you're staying in really nice hotels, you're in the best areas, you're eating the best food. You know, any city where you aren't getting like the real low down experience, like the real on your personal budget, you know, you live here every day, you know, it's definitely that entourage glamorous version of a city. The same thing happens in New York. If I go with a brand, I'm going back home with a brand and I'm staying in a hotel and everything's paid for and Uber's everywhere, you know, any city, anytime you travel and you're not having like that true native experience, then you know, it's not a full experience. So that was kind of how LA was for me. Um, but I did know that New York was wearing down on me and it was just getting to the point where I don't know. I felt like I just needed a shift and I know that I wanted to move out of my apartment and I'd been in my apartment for like six years or more. I don't remember. Like a long time. And you know, I felt like, okay, I should move because I need a new energy. I need new surroundings. I need new walls. I need new space, new energy, everything. And because I had this rent stabilized huge my apartment in new york was massive um it's by new york stand it was in the rest of the country it was probably like a really nice size two bedroom apartment but by new york standards it was a mansion and so i knew that if i move in the city i was kind of thinking like where do you even want to live i think i didn't want to live uptown anymore um i had never lived downtown i've always been a little bit afraid because you really are trading space the apartments are so small down there um you're trading space for your address and or is it old and i don't know i just didn't really know what i wanted and so um it came into my mind i think maybe a year and a half ago two years ago like i was visiting la and i kept thinking like when i would visit the last like couple years i was like yo i don't want to leave like i want to be here i want to feel what this feels like and so um, when I wanted to move out of my apartment, I decided that maybe I would take a look at LA. If it's meant to be, it'll be. My whole life has been just me trusting in God and like saying, if I'm meant to be here, this is going to work out smoothly. Like, I don't feel like I want to fight to live in LA, but if I create um, scenarios in which I can put myself here, I can go check things out and it feels seamless, then I'm going to make the move. And so um, I was in LA for Essence Black Women in Hollywood event. Um, they had brought me out and um, I or someone else, I don't remember, some brand that I was working with brought me out and I attended the Essence event. event. And um, I was like, you know what, so Alexis, who you guys have met, um, drove me around for literally three days looking at apartments. I extended my stay. I went on um, all of the apps and the apartments.coms and all the things. And in LA, um, here's a big, big difference between New York and LA. Um, how you look for an apartment is crazy. Like you in New York have to scour the internet, maybe go to a building you like, ask if there's availabilities. There's housing lotteries where you can fill out these intense applications and try to win something based on your income. So if you make, you know, $40,000, $100,000, whatever it is, they will put you in some nice building and charge it, you know, appropriately to your income. Like it's intense and hard to find. Things go incredibly fast. Like if you go into an apartment in New York and you love it, you need to be prepared to leave the a check then and there or you need to be prepared to fill out an application right away and you still might not get it because you're not the first person who filled out the application um, you may not approve be approved in terms of um, finance finances because they sometimes want you to make 40 times the year's rent the year's rent is four thousand dollars like it's intense in LA totally different story um, a lot of apartments are kind of by owner and so they are um, have signs out front so a lot of stuff's not even listed online a lot of it you just have to drive around and say you know there's a sign call hey can I come see the apartment and so that's what I did a ton of I did a ton of driving around with Alexis calling places that you know looked pretty from the outside in a neighborhood that I like and I saw a bunch of places and I felt like there were so many livable places so many options and it was nuts I was like this is this is what's normal for people you just go somewhere and you call them and they go oh yeah I'm, I'll be around in 20 minutes I can come over and show you the place 
what? And then you go in and they're all like big and clean and nice and normal. You know, I definitely know that I was blessed in that I had a pretty decent budget. Um, I wasn't like, I think if you're looking for something really, um, you know, on a different or like in a lower sort of like budget it could be more challenging but I, I saw tons of stuff at every budget I really really did I think you might not get your exact neighborhood that you want but I saw tons of livable apartments especially coming from my New York guys um so I saw a bunch of places all of which I could have easily lived in it was just me trying to decide what was the best neighborhood for me because I'm new to the city I want to make sure that I'm super central um I know you know you guys know I don't drive yet working on it um so I wanted to make sure that I could like you know everything was accessible walk a block and walk to my coffee shop I would love to like walk to a grocery store and so um I saw a bunch of places and ended up picking this one which we are finally finally ready for a house tour I'm sorry it took so long but honestly I sold everything when I left New York so I was starting from zero so I feel like I've done this in a pretty decent amount of time um so the, the housing thing is completely different. Now let's talk like life in LA. Living in LA is so freaking different than New York. Um, when I first moved here, I was traveling every single month. Like I would be home for a maximum of two weeks. October is the first month that I lived in LA the entire month. So um, it felt like it was the first month that I like settled a little bit. Um, the first part of me moving was finding a place and then I had my empty apartment. So then it was intense like, okay, I'm decorating, I'm shopping, I'm busy looking for things, trying to make this my home. I had a ton of work travel as I normally do. So I was back and forth to New York. I was in um, Mexico with Carla. I was in New Orleans for Essence Fest. I think I went to Miami. I was in Joshua Tree two times and I was in Palm Springs. Like I was all over the place. I went to Barcelona. Like it's been a, an intense six months like of like moving around. And so um, the thing about LA is one, the biggest difference is obvious the weather. Um, LA weather is so, oh, it's so dreamy. It's so inviting. It's so like warm. Um, it has definitely affected my um, my mood and like my activity because when I look outside and the sky is blue and it's sunny, I'm like, I want to go outside. Like, so I will just go for a walk or um, go do work in a coffee shop or go meet up with friends. I meet up because all most of my friends work independently or the ones that work at agencies and stuff like that, like some of my PR friends from my other life um, or just people that I've met. You know, people can take lunch breaks or we go to dinner. Um, I have just become so much more um, outdoorsy. I know I always was because I grew up as a kid like in Girl Scout camp and going camping with my family. My family used to like, we would go like, just my mom and dad were very good at like the whole exploring the world thing. Um, and I feel like I kind of lost that in New York, even though I would travel outside of the city. But at a certain point, I think I got really bad at like, um, exploring New York City and really like appreciating all the things there are to do there and so my approach to LA especially as I'm getting to know the place is to explore try things go to different neighborhoods wander around and that's what I've been doing um so you know the one thing to know about LA is that it's not all Beverly Hills it's not all um you know beautiful palm tree lined streets um a lot of the like main streets and the um you know like other i don't know like residential areas they don't look the there's not like all sexy and beautiful you know because everything is very flat so there's not a lot of you know um i don't know there's not a lot of visual interest and certain places like downtown la where there's all these like cool clubs and restaurants and a lot of new like apartment buildings and stuff it's still a little bit like for me um you know kind of sketchy vibes like you know you might see people doing drugs or you know it's intense the other thing in LA um, that's different to New York and this is weird to say because New York um, in the past has had huge um huge issues with um you know people who have don't have homes um being you know able to find resources like where can they go it's dangerous to sleep outside if it's 30 degrees or you know in the teens or you know below zero and all that and LA's 
population of people without homes um you know it's very 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 present and visual um there's tent cities and so people who need to set up a tent because they don't have anywhere to go um you know and i know the city is like working on it but i just hope that we're not you know sort of removing people and throwing them to the wayside the actual resources for them to have a place to live that is safe and that is you know um you know something that people can feel good about uh, is gonna happen so that's my that's my hope and my wish um so yeah i mean living in la has been really great and um it's so funny because those of you who are regulars on my channel half of you say when i go to new york you're just so much happier in new york oh i feel like we got a little bright i'm gonna turn this down the sun is rising because i told you it was very early when we started um you're so much happier in new york look at you and then the other half of you are i love oh i just i love la kelly you're so much happier here and i'm like i'm a happy person like that's natural like my joy is at the surface um I, when i was talking to one of you guys in my dms and she had said like oh i just miss new york kelly and it's that and i was like you miss new york you don't miss new york kelly because i'm the same person in both cities i do the same stuff like i talk to y'all i do my work my work is the same um i have friends i go meet up with we do activities there's definitely more to do in new york in terms of like socializing in a one particular kind of way like in a worky way like tons of parties tons of um bloggery events and things like that here there are definitely um some but the things that i'm interested in doing here um i'm just sort of learning like i'm really into the outdoor aspect like i haven't had this version of nature um ever so, like access to live access to a beach in 20 minutes access to the mountains in 40 minutes you know so i'm really exploring i haven't explored the west coast that that much because in new york when i traveled i was either going like always to the caribbean or to europe or you know just going more east but you know i haven't really done the west thing outside of la and san francisco for work so i'm gonna be doing a lot more of that um but you know I think the people who think that they like me in one city more or another they really just like the backdrop and so they like seeing me walk around new york because they like new york they want to see the buildings they want to see all the people they want to see the events i go to and they like that sort of schmancy new york vibe and the people who are loving me in california love this like relaxed version of me um they like seeing the scenery the palm trees the blue skies it's bright all the time and that so i think it's really just about that because i am literally the same human in both places i'm the same person always when you meet me in person i'm like those of you who have met me, please vouch for me in the comments. I am exactly the same. Like, I'm smiley, whatever. I'm, you know, always happy to talk to you. Um, and I'm also, yeah, I'm sarcastic and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm me. Like, I'm literally me. So, um, those, you know, main differences, if we just want to do a little recap, housing, like looking for an apartment, I would call it, you know, if we had to do a New York versus LA, I'm going to say L LA wins for um, you know, the ease of finding an apartment. New York is much harder. Um, the quality of life in LA is also, I would give it to LA. Um, and it just dep depends on what quality you are looking for. So before, um, you know, in my 20s, I was looking for action. I was looking for, that sounded crazy. You know what I mean. I was looking for parties. I was looking for um, networking. I was looking for work connects. I was looking for um, focusing on my career. I was looking for energy 24 seven. And now I'm looking for, um, you know, going to sleep at 10 o'clock. I'm looking for waking up early. I'm looking for mountains. I'm looking for beaches. I'm looking for the best New Balance to go hiking. I'm looking up, you know, um, aqua yoga classes and like, I want to I don't know like what's the new facial like I feel like I'm just like in that point in my life where I am so down to work hard but I want to do it in um in a place that's a little easier to live like imagine just I'll give you the perfect example and this is just for me I'm not crapping on New York at all because New York will forever be my city it is the place I call home Philly is my original home but Philly only feels like home because I was born there so I'm a Philly girl my entire family is there so I feel 
you know, forever connected to Philly. But New York is the home where I became an adult and I, I really am, I, I developed who I am. So I, the person I am is completely, um, you know, a New Yorker. It just is the, it's true. If I need to do a part two of this video, I totally will. This was just completely rambly and chatty and I hope you don't mind, but I really just wanted to kind of get into it. I probably should write down a bullet point list, like here are the differences, but housing is different, quality of life is different, Access and opportunity is different, you know, depending on where you are. I feel established enough that I can be in um, California and not feel like I'm losing, you know. I feel like I have enough contacts in New York. I go back all the time. All my best friends are there. Um, many jobs are bringing me back there. So I feel like having both is amazing. I don't think I could, like, live in L.A. if I was never going to New York again. So I will say that. Um, anyway... I appreciate you listening to this rambly vlog um, and I hope I made any sense because I totally didn't make notes and I feel like I might have should have but we'll, we'll round to this if you're interested in a round two for actual more sort of like here's this here's that um, and if you're interested in how to move to New York you can let me know if you're interested in my personal like work journey um, You can let me know but I gotta get ready because it's Sunday and your girl's still not off I pray pray for me all that I can take Monday off. I'm so tired um, But I'm doing a really exciting shoot that I can't wait to share and so I got to go, but I love you Mean it. Bye